Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Bo. Paruji. Is it trying who's translating? Uh, Dr. Sagar, Hare Krishna Paruji. Hare Krishna. Where is he? Uh, one minute. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. What's happening? Uh, internet problem Maharaj. Oh. Hare Krishna. I'm still waiting. Now, okay, Guru Maharaj, he's here, Dr. Sagar Harikrishna Paruji. Okay, I can begin? Yes, yes, yes Maharaj. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militan Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha kaupa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
We're going through the prayers offered by Prahlad Maharaj to Lord Nishingadev after Lord Nishingadev had killed Haranyakashipu. It's very surprising, of course, that Prahlad Maharaj would offer prayers to the person who killed his own father. We see in the material world how people are very attached to their mother and father and they do everything to save them. Of course, Prahlad did try to give Krishna consciousness to his father, but his father was not willing to accept. So the result was that Lord Nishingadev appeared and fought with Haranyakashipu, killed him, and then Prahlad came forward and pacified Lord Nishingadev. So Prahlad Maharaj is a great transcendentalist and he understood Lord Nishingadev to be the personality of Godhead and began to glorify him by prayers. So Prahlad Maharaj understood that the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He appears, he, when He appears, He's meant to be worshipped by the Paramahansas, by the great saintly persons. So Paramahamsa means somebody who is not really in this material world, they're aloof from the material world, they're already liberated souls. Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, just like there may be the mixture of water and milk, so the swan can come and the swan knows how to take the milk and leave the water. So, the same way the saintly person, the Paramahamsa, he can take the best of, he can take the essence of everything and use it for the service of Krishna. Sometimes uh, sannyasis in the final stage of sannyas are described as paramahamsas. So Prahlad Maharaj is describing to Lord Nishringadev how 
one has to offer, one has to engage in devotional service to actually understand the Lord. And Prahlad Maharaj said, studying the Vedas, just simply studying the Vedas and reciting prayers from the Vedas, that's not going to help us to understand the Lord. This is also described by Lord Brahma in his prayers in Brahma Samhita. Lord Brahma says, Vedeshu Durlabham Adurlabham Atma Bhakto. Right. Lord Brahma is saying very difficult to know Krishna or to understand the Supreme Lord from the Vedas, but very easy to know him by devotion. So the Vedas are described in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, nice Trigunya Bhava Arjuna. Rise above the modes. He said the Vedas deal with the three modes of nature, Arjuna. Rise above these modes. So the Vedas, are go they're not going to help us to actually know the real absolute truth. They will simply bewilder the minds of the ordinary people. The Vedas are uh, usually they're recited only by the Brahmanas. If one is not a Brahmana, then he's not allowed to officially recite the Vedas. But people, these brahmanas, they don't understand the real purpose behind the Vedas. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that by all the Vedas I am to be known. I am the author and I am the compiler of the Vedas. So people become attracted by the flowery words of the Vedas and that can simply only at the best, it can elevate them to the higher planets, the heavenly planets, but it cannot get them free of birth and death. So Prahlad Maharaj is saying that we have to, if we want to get the real goal of life, we have to, we have to engage in devotional service. When we do devotional service, then we will get the mercy, the real mercy of the Lord, because He's, a, he's conquered by pure devotion. Uh, 
हमें भगवान को भी कृपा पाने सकते हैं रा रा त्यों किना बंदे के लिए भक्ति गारा भगवान के लिए जब बंदे के लिए वशिष्ठ बंदे के लिए सो प्रवाद महाराज मेंशंस in his prayer, he mentions about six different ways in which we can render service unto the Lord. The first item he mentions is that we should offer prayers to the Lord. Ordinary people, however, they don't know how to pray to the Lord. When Srila Prabhupada was in USA, there was this one man who was a, a he was a, a Christian missionary and he came to Prabhupada and he wanted to ask Prabhupada, he said, I don't know what to pray for. He was a, a sincere man. He understood that it's not good to go to God and ask Him, you know, give me this, give me that, let me get money, let me get success, let me get fame. So he understood prayer is not meant for just coming to God to tell him what we want for our sense gratification. Is the kind of sense gratification, Maharaj? Yes, any kind of sense gratification, material sense gratification. But to Prabhupada, it was very clear what we should pray for. Prabhupada said, we should pray to the Lord for devotional service. Please engage me in your service. Just like when we chant the Maha Mantra, when we're chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we're, it's a prayer to the Lord that please, O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari, O Supreme Lord Rama, please engage me in your service. So offering prayers to the Supreme Lord is something which we all want to cultivate. We want to regularly pray to the Lord. When we, we don't need to tell Krishna what we need, we don't need to tell him, we don't need to tell him, give me money, give me good health, give me long life. We don't need to make a list of all of our material desires. That's not required. <laughs> We simply want to pray to the Lord that please tell me how I can serve you. What can I give for you? You've done so much for me. Let me do something for you. Hazurlai, 
So if we don't know how to pray, we can learn by reciting the prayers of great devotees. Just like Prahlad Maharaj is praying here. Prahlad Maharaj is, has been inspired by the grace, by the touch of the hand, the lotus hand of Lord Nisringadev on his head, and Prahlad Maharaj is offering these wonderful prayers. And Prahlad is only a child at this time. He's still a young child, but still he's able to offer these wonderful prayers. And so then we have we have very many different devotees praying in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in Bhagavad Gita we have Arjuna praying to Krishna. And we have Lord Brahma's prayers, just like every day we play the Govinda prayers. So, when we pray, just like Lord Brahma's praying, he's not asking for anything. He's just glorifying the Supreme Lord. So Brahma, play, Brahma prays Govinda Madhi Pursham Tamaham Bajamin. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord. This, he's, that's his prayer. He's not asking Krishna give me, he's not asking anything. He's just glorifying the Lord. So we may like to offer prayers, it's certainly something which we should be doing. And we do, of course, every day in our temple, when we have programs, we often recite prayers. So it's a very good practice which we want to cultivate and it's one way in which we can come to understand the Supreme Lord just simply by reciting prayers, glorifying Him. Then the next item which Prahlad mentions, he said we should dedicate all the results of our activities for the pleasure of the Lord. This is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, Yad Karoshi, Yaj Ashnasi, Yad Jahosi, Dadasi, Yad, Yad Tapashyastu Konteya, Tat Kurushva, Mad Arpanam. Right? Whatever you do, whatever you eat and offer and give away, whatever austerities you may perform, do them as an offering unto me. Yeah. 
So this is this is a difficult thing for people to do because we're so attached. We like to enjoy the results of everything ourselves. But one who is a devotee, they want to offer the results to Krishna for his pleasure, not for their own self, but for the pleasure of Krishna. Hmm. Of course, some people, they might want to offer to other gods. If they offer to other gods, that's not devotional service. If you offer to Durga or Ganesh or Shiva, that's not devotional service. You have to offer to the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Sometimes people think all the gods are one, but that's not true. All the gods are different. Everyone is an individual. I'm saying uh, some people think all the gods are the same, all the gods are one. There's no difference. But that we don't agree. Prabhupada points out there's there's a difference between Bombay and Calcutta and Mad Chennai. They're all different places. It's not all one, but there is variety. There's a oneness, but there's also variety. And it's very wrong to think everyone is the same. We're all one, but at the same time we're individuals. So we want to offer the results of our work for the satisfaction of Krishna. And this is, this is a yoga, this is karma yoga. Hmm. And Krishna describes karma yoga in Bhagavad Gita. He says, Karmani eva dikareste mapalishu kadachana na karma pala he turbur mate sangosva karmani. Lord Krishna says, is it everyone has a right to perform their duty? Yes, we have the adhikar, we have the qualification to do our work. Arjuna's work was to fight. Krishna was encouraging to fight because it was his, his duty, he was a kshatriya. So whatever duty one has, someone may be Kshatri, they may be Vaishya, they may be Brahman or Sudra, whatever you can, you do it but offer the result for the pleasure of Krishna.
and offer the result with loving devotion. Don't be greedy, don't be bitter about giving, giving the result to Krishna. Be happy. If we're thinking why I should give to Krishna, I want it, I should get the result, I should enjoy, and then we become bitter, I don't want to give to Krishna, this is very bad. We have to understand everything belongs to Krishna, it's his property, we should give it to him. Then Prahlad says, the third item, he said, we should worship the Supreme Lord. Right? Everyone should, they, we should keep Krishna's photograph or Krishna's deity, we should make a temple in our home, you should make some altar where you can offer incense and flowers and you can offer your food. We should understand God is a person, just like Lord Nasringadev has appeared in front of Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj understands Lord Nasringadev is a person and he should be properly respected. And the way to respect him is by worshipping him. Right. We will show our respect and worship, we will offer obeisances, we will fall down, offer dandabats in front of the Lord. In this way, we will worship Him. Mm. Then we will we will prepare foodstuffs and we will offer the food first to the Lord for His pleasure. We think the deity is a person, just like we are persons, the deity is also a person and he needs to eat and he should eat first. So when we cook food, we want to offer it to the Lord and for His pleasure and we will offer prayers at that time. We will chant the holy name and request the Lord to take His food. So there are many devotees, they will worship the Lord every day. Before they will take any food, they must first, first perform worship of the Lord. Then the next item Prahlad mentions, he said, one should work on behalf of the Lord. So, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna did not tell Arjuna that you don't have to fight. Krishna told Arjuna, you have to fight. Arjuna 
Krishna told Arjuna, fight. He said, I'm not going to fight. Krishna said, I won't fight, but you fight. I'll be with you. And because Arjuna fought, so he came out victorious because Krishna was always with him, helping him. And sometimes Krishna would break his promise. Although he promised not to fight, sometimes he would fight. So Krishna wants all of us to fight. We have to fight Maya. Just like we have temples, we don't live in the temple just to eat and sleep. Sometimes people think, oh, I live in the temple, very easy life, and just eat a nice prasadam all day and go to sleep. We don't have to do much work. But Prabhupada said the temple is not a place for just eating and sleeping. He said it's he said the temple is a place for the army to go out and fight Maya. We have to go out and preach the message of Krishna consciousness everywhere, wake people up about the goal of life. So this is the real work which we have to do on behalf of the Lord. People think, oh, I'm working for the Lord. They sit in their shop or they sit in their home. They, they, they don't know what, really what they're supposed to do for the Lord. We're meant to preach Krishna consciousness. We're meant to go everywhere and preach. Even you don't travel, you don't like to go far, you, maybe you can't move away from your home, you have responsibilities, you have to be there. But still, whoever we meet, we should tell them about Krishna. This is a duty of a devotee to give the mercy to others. People are suffering in the material world. They have no knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Just like if we see people suffering from, you know, some disease, maybe they've got COVID, or cancer, we know they're suffering. And if we know the cure, then we want to share it. We want to tell everyone the cure. So in the same way, people are suffering birth and death. They're here in this material world, suffering. We can save them by giving them Krishna consciousness. So we have to work on behalf of Krishna 
on the behalf of Lord Nishingadev. We have to work, we have to go and preach and teach people about Krishna. Prabhupada always wanted to know how many books did we distribute? How many new devotees have we made? Hmm. Prabhupada said he gave, he gave up he gave up mating and defending while he was still a young man. Yes, mating and defending. Yeah, he gave it up. He left mating and defending. Even yes, he gave them up. He stopped mating and defending. And then Prabhupada said, in, now in the old age, in the end of my life, I have also given up eating and sleeping. Sorry, Maharaj. He said, now I have given up eating and sleeping. In material world, everybody's busy with four activities – eating, sleeping, mating, defending. This is the business of animals. So if somebody is only eating and sleeping and mating and defending, then he is a two-legged animal. Human life is not meant to just live like the animal. Human life is meant for self-realization. And those people who are becoming self-realized, they will want to work on behalf of the Supreme Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Nachatasman manushyeshu kashchan me priyakritama. Krishna said, if you want to be dear to me, if you want to be close to me, then teach Krishna consciousness to others. And Lord Chaitanya told the same thing when he was, Lord Chaitanya was in Kurmade, Kurmadesh, uh, yeah. he, he told the Brahmana, wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. And this, this way Lord Chaitanya is ordering all of us to become a spiritual teacher and to give people the spiritual knowledge. Yeah. 
Then the next thing Prahlad Maharaj says, he said, we should always remember the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. There's no difference between the lotus feet of the Lord and the lotus face of the Lord. But it's proper etiquette when we begin our worship, when we begin to look on the Lord, we should begin from His lotus feet. The Lord has also lotus face, He has lotus hands, He has lotus eyes, but we begin from the lotus feet. In other words, we should, when we approach the Lord, we have to be humble. We are not equal to the Lord. He is the Supreme and we are His tiny servants. The, the feet of the Lord are compared to the lotus flower because the lotus has a special nectar. You get this nectar, you get this nectar from the lotus flower. It's a very special medicine which can, you can put on the eyes if you're having an eyesight problem. You take the medicine, the nectar from the lotus flower and you put it on your eyes and it can save your sight. Maharaj Ambarish was a great devotee of the Lord and he was active using all of his senses in the service of Krishna. But it is described that Maharaj Ambarish began his service by Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor. That the very first thing he did was to fix his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord is supreme, He is the Ishwara, we are not, we are His tiny servants, we are the Das. So we need to approach the Lord with great humility, bowing before Him. So we, we want to take the shelter, the mercy of the lotus feet of the Lord because they can deliver us from the material world. Now there's one more final item of devotional service Prahlad Maharaj is mentioning and that is to hear about the glories of the Lord. He 
Lord Chaitanya also gave great importance to hearing. It's the beginning of devotional service. Yeah, before we can chant, before we can remember, first we have to hear. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the yoga ladder in the first six chapters. And then at the top of the yoga ladder, there is bhakti yoga. So the final verse of the sixth chapter describes that bhakti yoga is at the top of the yoga ladder. So then chapter 7 begins and chapter 7 begins Krishna is going to describe about bhakti yoga. Actually the middle portion of the Bhagavad Gita chapter 7 to chapter 12 is all bhakti yoga. And Lord Krishna, just, he begins the seventh chapter, he tells Arjuna, he said, Now hear Arjuna, how by practicing yoga you can know me in full, free from doubt. So Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna was telling Arjuna, you have to hear. The hearing process is the beginning of the bhakti yoga. So it's important for us that we have to hear, we have to hear regularly because hearing is how we can water our creeper of devotion. By some good fortune we meet the devotees and they give us the seed of devotion, they put the seed of devotion into our heart. But once the seed is put into the heart, we still have to water it and the watering should be regular. Just like at this time in India, especially in Mayapur, at this time it's very dry. We don't get much rain. It hasn't rained for a long time. So we have, the farmer has to go and water his seeds in the same way we have to water our creeper of devotion. So hearing is how we can water the seed of devotion by regularly hearing from the scriptures and hearing in the association of devotees. 
खत्ता हम श्रवण गये हमें इस भक्ति रूपी जो बीज हमें सब हमेशा सिंचन कर There is a beautiful sloka in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Kapila is speaking to his mother Devahuti. So there it is said Satam prasanga mama virya samvedo bhavanti rit karana rasayana kata jas joshana jasha pavarga vartmani shadarati bhakti ranukramishyati Lord Kapila is describing topics of Lord Krishna when heard in the association of devotees is very pleasing to the ear and to the heart And by hearing topics of Krishna in the association of devotees, then we get the benefit. We come through the different stages of devotion. We come to Rati, and then we come to Baba, and then we come to Prema. So, of course, these are the very high elevated stages of devotion. They are actually meant for these Paramahamsas, these great devotees. Yes. So we have to we have to develop our taste for hearing about Krishna. We know in the beginning it's not very tasty. We don't enjoy it very much. We only like kirtan and we only like prasadam. We don't like to hear. But hearing is very important for all of us. Otherwise, we'll never understand Krishna. We want to understand Krishna. We have to get the blessings of Krishna. He can reveal himself to us. So, the only way we can approach Krishna is by bhakti. And when we speak about other yogas like karma yoga and jnana yoga, it also includes bhakti. And sometimes Prabhupada speaks about buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga means working with intelligence. So we, we want to have a good intelligence, know how to serve Krishna with full knowledge. And then we can be sure to get a good result. So Prahlad says, if we want to get free from this material world, 
then we have to take up devotional service. It's the only way. And if we do devotional service, then very quickly we can get out of this material world. Krishna is very attracted to devotion. So, look, Prahlad, in this way, Prahlad Maharaj is describing how we can do, use our body, mind and words all in the service of Lord Krishna. We have to do service. We cannot just be idle. All right, we will stop here. We'll ask if there's any question. So is today a courtesy there? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So I got to say, it's a very important day, a very day very dear to Krishna, a day to increase our hearing and chanting. Are you all chanting, chanting more rounds today? Prabhupada liked us to chant at least 25 rounds on a courtesy. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Panam, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, Jo Maharaj Te Bataun Vajyo Ni Bhavan Lai Bet Vada Jatnu Sagi Dei Na Ra Bhavan Lai Bhakti Dwara Matri Jatnu Sagi Ncha Vandi Ra Pani Bhavan Le Pandra Adhyayago Pandra Slok Ma Bhagavad Gita Ma Bhattu Sarvastra Chaap Ma Bhandu Vajyo Ni Bet Dwara Ma Jandi Ne Vala Hu Ra Bet Lai Jatnu Ne Vala Pani Ma Hu Vandha Aba Esla Amle Kasari Bhuk Di yeah, Prabhupada, uh, Prabhuji asked him that you have mentioned that we cannot approach God, Krishna, by studying Vedas. But at the same time, we can find in chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita what has said, Vedas uh, is the service of Ahutiva Vidya. By studying Veda, you can know me. Uh, it is the essence of Veda to know me in truth. So, how can we understand by this sloka? Yes. All right. Good question. No, we can understand Krishna from the Vedas, but it's not very easy to understand him from the Vedas. It's quite difficult because there's so many other things there. The Vedas talk a lot about the three modes of nature and about how to get material sense gratification. It only talks, only talks very briefly about how to get free of birth and death. And most of the Vedas is talking about doing ritualistic ceremonies and karmakandi activities to get good results, material prosperity. 
But if you want to get free of birth and death, you have to read the, the real fruit of the Vedas. The fruit of the Vedas is the Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Vedas is like the tree, but the Bhagavatam is the fruit. The fruit is the valuable part of the tree. So somebody may be a very big Sanskrit scholar and they come and they translate the Vedas. They never know anything about Bhakti Yoga. They, they miss it. They're not devotees and they didn't understand the importance of Bhakti. Because the Vedas doesn't stress it. it does, the Vedas don't put much importance on bhakti because they know the common people not so much interested in bhakti. Hmm. Krishna says, out of thousands among men, only one is getting perfection. And of thousands of people who get perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So they study the Vedas, but they miss the whole point. They, they don't know who is actually behind it. They don't know who is the author of the Vedas and who is the compiler of the Vedas. They, they don't see this. Krishna does not reveal himself to all these people because these people are not qualified. They're, they're just, they have all material desires. So Krishna doesn't reveal himself to these people. Because Krishna knows if he, if he was to give devotional service to these people, they wouldn't they wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it properly. They would just abuse it. They, they, they don't want devotional service. They just want their material desires. They want sense gratification. They don't want love of God. They want love of money, they want love of beer, they want love of cigarettes, they want all their sin. And so the Vedas are to bring people to a proper standard, a, a civilized standard, following some basic principles. Then gradually, gradually they come to a higher level. So Krishna is there in the Vedas, but 
not everybody is aware, not everybody is looking for Krishna, they're looking for other things. Yeah, people looking for other things, they'll find other things, they'll find so many other things in the Vedas. But the devotee, he, he wants Krishna. So when he reads the Vedas, he can find Krishna. But not much, only a few places to hidden. So that's why Vyasadeva wrote more books. Vyasadeva, he had the Vedas, but he also wrote the Puranas. And he wrote the Mahabharata with the Bhagavad Gita there in the Mahabharata. Because he knew he, 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 if people just have the Vedas, They'll never learn, they'll never get very far. So he wrote other books to help them, to make it easier for them. But then Narada Muni told him, you have to also glorify Krishna, you have to glorify Bhakti Yoga, you have to give them the really important thing. So it's like that. In the, in the Kali Yuga, the Puranas are more important, and the most important of all the Puranas. It's the Srimad Bhagavatam. You read Srimad Bhagavatam, then you understand fully about Krishna. But any other thing, any other way, you 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 may miss the point, you won't get much. And the Vedas, are, they're only for the Brahmanas. Only the Brahmanas are supposed to read the Vedas. But Lord, Lord Chaitanya wants to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. So Srila Vyasadeva, he wrote Vedanta Sutra, the, the Vedanta, the end, of, the end of the Vedas and the Sutra in a condensed form. So the Vedas is too big, too many books, too much. So he wrote, he summarized it with the Vedanta. And then he wrote his commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, that was Srimad Bhagavatam. So 
So all the Acharyas, they also wrote commentaries on Vedanta Sutra. And so Lord Chaitanya, it was arranged also that we got the Gaudiya Vaishnava commentary on Vedanta. Mm. So you, you don't need to waste the time to read the Vedas. We need to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the mature contribution of Vyasa Dev. After he got guided by Narada Muni, after he got instruction from Narada Muni about what to write and how to write, then he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is the fruit of all the Vedas. Mm -hmm. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Dhanyabad. Dhanyabad. Okay, any other question, anybody? Well, we need to work with devotion. That's the point. Whatever we do, we should do it with loving devotion as an offering for the pleasure of Krishna. We should understand nothing belongs to me, I'm not the proprietor, I don't own anything. Lord Krishna is the master, he is the proprietor, everything is his. I am simply a tiny, insignificant servant of Him. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also describes in the verse, in the third chapter, that never be attached 
to not performing your duty. Not performing duty? Yeah, don't be attached to, sometimes we think, I don't want to do this, but it's our duty, we should do it. And never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of the activities. Sometimes we're thinking, you know, if we make a lot of money, or oh, I'm very intelligent, by my intelligence, I've made all this money. And sometimes we lose a lot of money. All the money is taken from us. So we have to understand this is all done by Krishna. But still we have to work, we have to work, do, do what is expected of us. We should know our adhikari, our qualification. Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna, your qualification is to work. And Arjuna's work was to fight. So Krishna tells Arjuna, you have to do your work, you have to do what's expected of you, but don't be attached to the results. Now, that's very difficult. We like to work, but we like to enjoy the results. But Krishna tells Arjuna, karma yoga is to give the result to Krishna. The result is not ours, it belongs to Krishna. So we work in that mood, in the mood of a detached servant. The Lord, He is the Master, He is the Ishwara. We are the servant, tiny, insignificant servant. In the Srimad Bhagavatam I was reading today about the Pandavas. I said the Pandavas, they were always, they, they would kept themselves always busy with many activities, working. They didn't think, oh, Krishna will take care of us, we are his devotees, Krishna will provide everything. They didn't, they did not do like, they didn't think like that. They worked very hard, they were very active. And they were always, they have always good character. They were not sinful and nasty and full of the mode of passion and ignorance. Rajaburi, 
So they're devotees, so they show the mode of goodness. They, they don't show the, the bad qualities, they show all the good qualities. And they're offering everything for Krishna. Nothing for themselves. So that should be the attitude of the devotee. Selfless surrender. We want to offer everything to Krishna. We don't expect anything for ourselves. So the Pandavas, we know Arjuna, he didn't, he didn't, in the beginning he didn't want to fight, but he did it because Krishna wanted him to do it. So he accepted Krishna's instruction. He did what Krishna wanted. He didn't do what he wanted. He took instruction from Krishna and he did it. And because he followed Krishna's instruction, he came out successful. But if, you, if we don't follow Krishna's instructions, then we'll never be successful. We're meant to be dependent on Krishna. But at the same time, we also work. We, we have to endeavor, we have to try, not just wait for Krishna to do everything. Yeah. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Dhanavad Prabhu. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank No more questions, eh? Questions on the Dharana Unagi Jebani Sonusa Sodia Link, Janel Kojigojini Sudu. Hare Krishna, Dana Pran Maharaji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Mosa, I would have prosna job. Aji Raji Raja Prabhuji. Aji Maharaj Le Kere Banuakyo Amerika Kulaki, so Saraman and Kona Vlai Pura Mata Punasani. Aji. Yes, Prabhuji asking that Maharaji, you was mentioning about the importance of Shravan, hearing. So, even we try to concentrate on hearing, uh, we cannot do it nicely. So, how can we develop the quality of hearing nicely. Yes, well, chanting will help us more, you have, we have to do more chanting and more uh, practice in hearing. It takes practice. Prabhupada said, in the beginning he also could not understand his spiritual master, but he did not go away. He stayed and he kept trying to hear and gradually he understood. Yes, 
निरुत्साहित भर उत्साह नघटाई कर हमें लगने करते जानू So some devotees, they will keep a notebook and they will write down. They will make notes when they hear, so that they can remember better. It's also good that whatever you hear. You try to repeat it and explain it to other people. Yeah, if if we are just hearing, it goes in the one ear and it goes out the other ear. All lost, useless. So when we hear it, it must go to the heart. You have to keep it in the heart. So you have to really have a desire, the strong desire to want to hear carefully, and then after you hear, you repeat it. If you don't use it, then you'll forget. Just like, you know, in India we used to keep water in the clay pot. I don't know in Burma, do you still have clay pots? You know, made from, made from the earth? Right. So you put the water in the clay pot, the water becomes cool. You don't need to keep it in the fridge because the, the, the water gradually, it, 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 the, the clay pot is porous and the water begins to come out through the clay pot and that cools the water. But the problem is the water is evaporating and gradually the pot becomes empty and all the water is gone. So knowledge is like that. If you don't use it, you just lose it. It dries up. You get it's all forgotten. So it's important to preach, to tell people about Krishna. It's like we, we learn slokas and we learn bhajans, but if we don't sing them, if we don't use them, if we don't quote the slokas, we forget them. So you have to use them, you have to practice. You have to be speaking about Krishna, whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. You remember, oh, what was that? What was that story? What was that pastime we heard? What did we hear? Oh, we forget. If we don't tell, if we don't use it, we don't repeat it, then we forget. Yes? 
अर्जुन प्रभु जी भाइयों बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत थैंक यू वेरी मच महाराज जी आई एम वेरी ब्लेसफुल नाउ ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू हरे कृष्णा Okay, so we thank all the devotees very much for. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your nectarine class. And thank Prabhu for his translation. Thank you, Maharaj. Very kind. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrindaki. Yeah. Haribol.